Hello, this is Caroline Smith reading Indians of the Oaks by Millicent Lee. This is part two, chapter 11, The Cherry Bush. The herb woman and Was stayed in the Pinyon country only one more day. The herb woman wished to start home before the others. She wished to gather herbs all the way. She would meet the other Indians at home. This is our last day here, said the herb woman to Was. What are we going to do, asked Was. We are going to hunt for every good herb of the forest, everyone could wish, it, or everything one could wish is here. They covered the breakfast fire with ashes, put on their basket caps and nets, and started up a little trail which ran toward the north. Keep your eyes open, said the herb, herb woman, and anything that is here will be seen by you. We must not leave the Pinyon country until we have taken all that there is to take. They had not walked far when Was spied a juniper bush dotted with berries. These berries look like good things of the forest, she said. I've never seen them before. Ha, ah, yes, said her mother. They are good indeed. Pick all you can. Many of the berries had fallen to the ground. Was found that it was easier to sit on the ground and pick them up than to pull them off the bush. Besides, there are only a few left on the bush. Gather the biggest ones, said her mother. This is not the only bush of these berries. Do you toast these too? asked Was. No, no, said her mother. They are too thick skinned to toast. We will boil them in the Oya when we get home again. They are blue now, but they will turn brown while they are cooking. Was thought these berries were very interesting. Almost everything in the Pinyon country was new to her. After they had gathered a small sack full between them, the herb woman started slowly on, looking always about her. Soon she began to sniff the air. There's much basket grass here, she said. But we have plenty of that at home. We will not load ourselves with things that are not necessary. This basket brush is a little different, said Was, looking at it carefully. The leaf seems a little thicker. It is thicker, said her mother. What plant would not grow thicker in a snowy land? What is a snowy land? asked Was, her eyes Wide open with wonder, a snowy land is a land covered with snow, answered her mother. Snow is a soft covering like a rabbit skin blanket, but it is white instead of gray. It falls through the air as lightly as floating rabbit fur, but it is not warm like rabbit fur. Why does it fall? asked Was. It falls so that it will melt and give us water in the valley, said the herb woman. When does it come? It comes in the winter. In the winter, the pine trees will be white with snow. All the Indians that live here will visit our warm valleys or the desert until it is gone. Was tried to picture the pine trees covered with bits of rabbit skin blanket, except the rabbit skin blanket in her mind was white rabbit skin. Shall I see it someday? She asked. You will see it from far off, maybe, said the herb woman. You will see it on a mountaintop, but you will not see it, it close to us if I'm with you. She laughed softly. I do not like snow in this skirt, she said. I have heard about some Indians far away who wear deerskin clothes and moccasins. They are not afraid of the snow because they have clothing like that of a deer. Was couldn't possibly imagine any other Indians beside her own Indians and the Yuma Indians and neighboring tribes. Once she had seen a Cocopa um, Indian but he did not wear deer skin. He ran away when he saw her Indians. Um, the Yuma and the Kumias Indians were friendly because a long time ago they had all planned, or they had all belonged to the same family, but the Cocoa Paws were enemies. Eee! Suddenly cried her mother. Here is a cactus plant with ripe fruit. The fruit was a dark rose color. Shall we take the fruit home? asked Was. No, no, said her mother. We have plenty at home. It will be hard to take anyways. We will eat some now. They ate cactus fruit until their lips were crim crimson. And the cactus seeds are good to eat too, said the herb woman. We will toast them someday when we have nothing better. We will mix them with water. They will make a nice thick drink. They passed many good things that grew at home. They passed yucca stalks, which are so good when roasted. They passed the pointed leaves of the mezcal. It is not the season for roasting the roots of the mezcal, said the herb woman. Besides, we can get plenty of mezcal whenever we go to the desert. As they turned a bend in the trail, they suddenly came upon a bush brilliant with red cherries. It was the holly-leaved cherry bush. 
Oh, cried Wasp, are those berries good to eat? The herb woman didn't say a word. She had waited a whole year for this sight. She pulled off some cherries as fast as she could and popped them in her mouth. Then she took off her basket cap and filled it to the brim with the cherries. She poured the cherries into her net, which she had lined with leaves. She filled the basket again and again. Wasp didn't talk either. She ate one cherry, then another, then another. She had never eaten anything that was so good. She too filled her little net with cherries. The forest seemed built around this cherry bush. It was as if the cherry bush were a fire in the center of it. Even the birds seemed happier near the cherry bush. The bright blue jays whirled over it. The towhees that those neat fellows dressed in orange and black gathered around it and warmed their coattails at the fire. How unlike were these towhees and their brothers, the brown towhees? But sweetest of all were the chickadees, those cheery little elves of the forest. They swayed at the tip ends of the cherry bush and called, Chickadee dee, chickadee dee. I have learned something, said Wasp as she chewed the cherries. And what is that? asked her mother. These cherries are not boiled or roasted or toasted in the sun. They're eaten raw. They had come to the end of the wandering trail. Now the herb woman made her own trail. She walked around the edge of fallen trees. She circled big rocks and bushes. Little Wasp followed her or followed her mother, sometimes changing the trail a little to suit herself. I like to make my own trail, thought little Wasp. The herb woman noticed that Wasp didn't follow step for step, although she followed in a general way. She will not need me always, thought her mother. She picks her own trail. It is good. As they were walking quietly along, they heard voices. Coming upon a wide clearing, they saw a party of young Indian men carrying curved wooden rabbit sticks. Whiz! One of the rabbit sticks was whirling through the air. It hit a rabbit in the neck, but the rabbit didn't even know that it had been struck. It all happened so quickly. Soon the air was alive with whirling sticks. We had better not try to cross this clearing, said the herb woman. The young men will think we are two jackrabbits and will aim at us. It is time to go back to camp anyway. They passed an elder bush on the homeward trail. Only a few pale berries stayed on the bush. The berries hung at the far end of one branch. A brown towhee was finishing them up. He is eating the last berries on the tree, said the herb woman. It is no matter. The elder bush grows at home. Are the blossoms good to eat? asked Wasp. She had never noticed her mother picking them. They are very good for fever, answered her mother, when they are stewed. I always carry some with me. I have some now. They make a nice broth for tiny babies. We Indians give our babies elder broth before we give them milk. That is why Indian babies are strong. Wasp wondered what the white people would say about that. She had only seen a few white people, but they seemed to be traveling on another trail from the Indians. When Wasp and her mother were drawing near their camp, they passed a little group of kumis, or kumiais. One of the old women of this group was melting pitch in a tiny oya. Why is she doing that? Wasp asked her mother. She has rheumatism, answered the herb woman. Melted pitch is good for that. She brings the little oya with her just for melting pitch. I hope she will not rub the pitch on it before it cools a little, said Wasp as she watched the hot pitch bubble in the oya. She has been using pitch medicine for 20 autumns, said the herb woman. I guess she knows how to put it on by this time. I hope that I may know all the medicines someday, said Wasp. You will know all the Indian medicines if you learn one every day, said the herb woman. But how can you ever know all the medicines of the white people? I shall not need to know the medicines of white people, said Wasp, as they reached their camp. The herb woman said nothing. She kept silent while they ate their supper. Join me next time for chapter 12. Bye.